Ever since the FN 5.7 pistol became available to U.S. civilians in 2004, many shooters have developed a strong interest in the 5.7 by 28 millimeter cartridge and the unique guns that fire them. Because of the relatively high cost of 5.7 ammo, the big question for people who own these firearms and the ones who are considering them is should I reload the 5.7 by 28? After all, the bullets are widely available because they're the same diameter as the common 223 Remington. Researching this question on the internet will get you such a wide range of opinions on the safety and practicality of reloading this round that a person will quickly learn that this tiny little cartridge has earned a reputation for being the forbidden fruit of the reloading world. With so many varied opinions from different sources ranging from the 5.7 was never intended to be reloaded, period, end of discussion, to of course it's reloadable. It's a cartridge just like any other. You just have to follow the normal process of working up your loads for the gun you want to shoot it in. Well, I've made this video to help you decide if reloading this cartridge is something you'd ever care to attempt. The person who enjoys reloading the 5.7 cartridge loves to read and has already spent countless hours poring over the internet postings on the subject of reloading and owns at least one, if not several, reloading manuals that he has read and understands completely. He already owns several pieces of high quality reloading equipment, the most important of which is a precision scale, and he isn't hesitant about spending a little extra money to get the things that make reloading safer and more enjoyable. An example of which would be high quality dies and a chronograph for documenting hand load velocities. Most importantly, the 5.7 reloader is an avid tinker with the patience of a saint. He is a guy who loves getting lost in a project, even if most people would consider his activities a total waste of time. The nature of metallic cartridge reloading does not tolerate ham-fisted, sloppy personality types. The point I'm trying to illustrate here is that the extra steps involved in preparation and the attention to detail that are required to safely reload these high-pressure 5.7s will likely make a person whose only interest is to save money on ammo soon wish he had never even bothered with it at all. So what's different about reloading these than, say, loading a 223 cartridge? The most notable difference is the proprietary coating that everybody talks about. That clear slippery stuff that's applied to the casings that allows them to feed so reliably from the really high capacity magazines that these cartridges are typically loaded into. Uh, the coating is also integrated into the functionality of the cartridge and allows the fired shell to extract properly, uh, particularly when used in the blowback operated PS90 cartridge. So why is the polymer coating such a big deal to the reloader? Because normal brass cleaning techniques will damage the coating and cause malfunctions in the semi-auto firearms that shoot them. Typical 5.7 brass preparation involves depriming the case, washing the brass in a 10% solution of simple green and warm water so as not to soften the coating which can strip away during resizing. A better but more costly method for cleaning the brass is to use an ultrasonic cleaner, but I don't have one of those yet. Then you apply sizing lube to the dry cases and resize with a very clean and well polished resizing die is not to damage the polymer coating. The soft brass of the 5.7 stretches enough that case trimming is required for nearly every loading. Isn't that nice? This is the step where you realize how important it is to avoid squeezing extra velocity from your hand loads. Keeping charges down around factory pressures can extend the number of reloadings for a piece of brass from about 3 
for hot loads to many reloadings before cracks or loose primers mark the end of the useful life for a piece of brass. Factory primers are staked in and many reloaders do not swage the primer pockets but rather they just use extra force to seat them. If there is any difficulty in getting the primer started into the pockets of once fired brass I typically swage them with a Dillon primer pocket swage tool. Another difference when comparing this round to more conventional ones is the fact that because the 5.7 by 28 is such an efficient cartridge design, meaning lots of pressure in a small package, the relatively low volume of the case makes it inherently sensitive to small variances in the amount of propellant that is loaded into them. Test charges are done in increments of one-tenth of a grain, which isn't very much if you look at it in a powder pan on your reloading scale. A charge difference of one half of a grain of propellant can take you from a normal load to the steep part of the pressure curve where you don't want to be if your personal safety, not to mention the useful life of your firearm, is important to you. A typical powder charge in a 223 uses up enough case volume to make a double charge basically impossible. but when loading the 5.7 by 28 a double charge is very possible and would almost certainly result in a catastrophic failure of the firearm. This is probably part of the reason that there is so little load data available for this cartridge and it may be the reason that some companies like Dillon Precision do not offer a shell plate for use in their progressive reloading equipment for the 5.7 cartridge. That's right, all loading should be done single stage. Still interested? Some reloaders say that every single charge for the 57 by 28 has to be weighed on a precision scale and that throwing charges is out of the question. What I have found is that while auto powder measures on progressive equipment lack the precision necessary to load the cases safely, conservative charges similar to factory loadings can be thrown by hand once you have a proven technique developed and conduct random weight sampling and careful visual inspection throughout the process. If you take a new factory loaded 5.7 by 28 cartridge and try to remove the bullet with a kinetic puller, it won't budge. This is because the bullets are glued into the case next to the factory ammunition. This fact can be illustrated by seating the factory bullet deeper into the case until you hear a pop. That's the sound of the glue breaking. Reloaders do not typically rely on glue to seat their 5.7 bullets. If you are using quality dies, there should be enough interference fit that specialized crimping tools will not be necessary. This is a 12 inch plate at 100 yards. And I'm going to try shooting it with 40 grain VMAX hand loads. 6.0 grains, accurate number 5. Six point two grains, accurate number 7. I hope this video is helpful in your decision of whether or not to tackle this controversial endeavor and I wish you many satisfying hours of reloading and safe shooting if you do. Thank you very much for watching.